Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. I want to begin by commending the Trump administration and the energy sector um, for the robust domestic energy production we're seeing now. There's no doubt that energy, American energy renaissance has strengthened our leadership on the world stage. The failure to seize the abundance of our resources had international implications. In fact, a couple of weeks ago, Fiona Hill testified in front of the House Intelligence Committee that Vladimir Putin saw American fracking as a great threat to Russian interest and that a fracking ban would play into strengthening Putin's hands. Energy, energy is used as a political weapon <clears throat> by many of our adversaries. We have the opportunity and arguably the moral obligation to export U.S. energy to energy-poor countries around the world to help them reduce their dependence on corrupt state-owned regimes like um, Vladimir Putin. We have the ability to increase the quality of life for so many people around the world. If we truly care about the lives of people around the world and impoverished regions, American energy export can help improve their lives by providing electricity to areas that don't have that. So they no longer have to cook over wood or coal or dung or whatever substance they use to, to heat in their homes, cook over. Uh, they have the ability with electricity to keep food fresh for longer periods of time. Uh, the air quality is much better. Possibility of air conditioning, possibility to read to their children at night. But yet, the policies I hear put forth and the ideas put forth today would increase electricity costs for American citizens. And who's hit worst by those costs? And that is the poor folks in our, our economy. Because higher electricity um, fees would eat up more of their already limited income, but yet you want to tax the energy production, you want to tax the manufacturing of this country and redistribute that wealth to help, I think Mr. Kaufman said, help those so they don't have to pay their electricity costs, the higher costs. And that's just redistribution uh, theology and it doesn't work. <clears throat> One added benefit that our export of LNG may be <clears throat> cleaner than that that those nations would use otherwise. So climate benefits are connected directly to the energy diplomacy efforts. But what do we do in this country? We're pushed to sign on to a Paris Climate Accord, but we're not holding India, China, and Russia accountable for their air quality emissions. How about this? Instead of stopping pipelines and LNG export terminals on the West Coast, why not support those so that cleaner burning, affordable, American-produced natural gas can be exported to areas like India or Southeast Asia or possibly China to help them lower their air quality emissions while supporting a robust American energy economy. A carbon tax, as you've proposed in your testimony, of a more drastic <clears throat> a ban on fracking that some have proposed will completely reverse the trajectory of American energy renaissance. American companies would be less inclined to innovate. Costs would undoubtedly go up for consumers across the economy. So, Dr. Gaddy, we talked uh, a lot about the role of natural gas in our changing uh, generation mix, but we all, always don't give credit <clears throat> where it's due. Do you agree that our emissions reductions were made possible by hydraulic fracturing and advances in technology? In the power sector, yes, sir. Can you talk a little bit about nuclear power and how that um, <clears throat> figures into the energy matrix and lowering our carbon footprint. Because, um, Mr. Esty, you're from Connecticut, is that correct? Your governor just decided not to decommission reactors and keep them online. Why? His own words were, we can meet our attainment levels. We can meet our lower carbon footprint by keeping nuclear in the mix. But there's a byproduct on nuclear power. And that's nuclear waste. It needs to go to a long-term stable storage facility. This committee's talked long about Yucca Mountain. I'm not going to go there today, but I support that as a long-term um, storage facility. Mr. Gad Dr. Gaddy, can you talk about nuclear power and how it plays into that, uh, into the lowering carbon footprint matrix? So the, the way I look at nuclear, it's a, it's a long-term investment. It's a long game. It's very different than the way a lot of the markets work now where Markets are, are trending towards short-term marginal profits, looking at natural gas, which I'm a natural gas supporter. It has gotten us to where we are in the power sector. 
I agree with your point that um, I would like to see us exporting that LNG to countries where other countries are building pipelines to connect them with their country. But the nuclear is the long game. We're looking at long-term carbon hedging here for eventually if there's a carbon price or anything. This is a long game. I'm out of time, but would you agree that Russia and China and India, Russia and China primarily, are exceeding the United States in nuclear technology and development at this point? Russia and China are. I wouldn't necessarily say India is, but they are on. They have strategies that we currently lack. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back.